It's Pep Talk Thursday for BYU football. Former NFL and BYU linebacker, one of our stable of BYU football analysts on BYU TV, David Nixon. David, Nixon. are you ready to bring the heat? I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm just glad we got Brian in there in the studio. I, I think the Logan takeover needs to come permanent, and uh, you two should just team up always. <laughs> wow. Oh. Like, it's Jerem's birthday, <laughs> David. Happy birthday, Jerem. <laughs> Happy I'm birthday. just kidding. I'm just messing. I like Jerem. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you have to say that. He pays your bills. Yeah, listen, <laughs> True. The, the, li- the linebacker is ready to bring it. Okay, I, I've kind of been been thinking – In a way, this is a good thing for BYU to go on a true road trip, not to Boise, not somewhere relatively close, but to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, a place they've never been. Is there something to the fact that they're going to a new location? They'll have seven to 10,000 BYU fans. That's the report that we're hearing, despite four losses. Is this the week that they can truly turn it around and start anew? Well, I hope it's the week, Um, but I I think so. I mean, I think going on the road, you're going to have a long flight out there. You're around your guys. Um, I think any time you can spend with your teammates at, in this juncture in, uh, of the season, I, I think it's positive um, because obviously, uh, you know, there, there are lacking there and, and I think be able to be around the teammates and, and hopefully, um, you know, spend some more time than your usual practice time. Cause you gotta remember after practice, everyone kind of splits their ways and, and, and goes to class and they have other obligations they have to get to. Um, and so I, I think some uh, ex- extended time to, to kind of, talk on the plane and um you know out there you know there's not gonna be a lot of family members there in tennessee um, whereas in boise state i imagine a lot of family members drove up so any any moment they had to get away after meetings or whatever it may be they were spending time with family up in boise um so i, I think uh you know now it's just gonna be them they're all gonna be hanging out with each other and i tell you there's gotta something's gotta come up to where um they they have to find that that mojo or something where they can rally around each other and and, and start playing for each other because that. That's what it all comes down to. We mentioned that on AFR that at the end of the day, when you're in a slump like this, uh, you've got to find some type of motivation. And uh, I remember, you know, we, we started off one and two, both my, my sophomore and junior years. I mean, we really had to dig deep and say, look, we're playing for each other. I mean, because at the end of the day, we're, we're the ones that have put in all the time. Um, you know, these, these are our seasons. We've only got four of these seasons in our whole career. Yeah. So we've got to take advantage of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, once again, you just rally around each other. Dave, that's an interesting point that you made that, you know, after practice is over, guys kind of go their separate ways. There's a lot of guys that are married. Did you see a difference with the team that you had success with uh, compared to the teams that you didn't as far as this, the team unity and the team bonding? Yeah, for sure. I, I think, uh, well, my last three years, um, we were pretty successful, but I looked back towards my freshman year, and, and there was. There was a huge difference. And, uh, you know, I think it, I think it was, uh, you know, you guys mentioned earlier, the band of brothers. And we truly bought into that, and we, we believed that. We, we believed that you were fighting for your brother next to you. And, uh, you know, I, do they have that now? I, I, I can't comment on that. I, I haven't been in that locker room. Uh, I mean, I can only see what they put out there on the, on the practice field and out there on the game field. Um, but I will say that that uh, when you are a true band of brothers and, and when you're kind of lean on each other, um, then some of the mistakes I think that are happening don't don't quite happen. So um, I, I don't know. I, I think there is something they could – obviously you can always improve on that, right? You can always become a more and more tight-knit team. Oh, yeah. There's, there's never a time whenever you're you know, in perfect harmony. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that might be something that, once again, on a road trip is, is something they might be able to, to use to, to help them uh, – you know, get ready for this game and this last, you know, home stretch of games. You know, something that, that we did, I mean, we talked about the gray T-shirts and the bladed grass, and, and that was all cool because it, it felt like we had the support of the, of the coaches with this as well. But something that we did was, you know, going to the bowling alleys together. I remember Andrew Rich always had barbecue, uh, you know, on, on, on Saturday afternoon and when we got back home or, you know, Fridays or Thursdays. Uh, you know, we, we, we spent extra time together uh, to get that unity. What were some of the things that you guys did that, that allowed you guys to be so close? You know, we had a lot of guys that were roommates with each other, obviously, um, and we we had a, we we just we spent a lot of time. I mean, outside of football, um, you know, we were all hanging out, and uh, you you would go to parties or whatever it was together, um, and and I think that that unity you had then carried over on the field because you kind of were on the same page. You know what to expect. You knew what to expect of the guy next to you. Yep. Um, and uh, and so that obviously helped. And, and once again, I can't comment on if they're doing that off the field or not. Um, but, uh, I mean, these are just little things that, that help, right? I mean, here we are, we're breaking down, 
this team at four and four, and you know we're we're wondering what's going wrong, what, what's wrong in the inside that locker room, and you know what's wrong with coaches or whatever it may be, people trying to point fingers. Mm-hmm. I will tell you one thing: winning cures everything. Oh yeah. And 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 if BYU can go out to Middle Tennessee State and, and pull out a victory, um, I tell you what, the fingers now aren't pointed. People, people are now optimistic, thinking, okay, we can make a you know win these last four games and and in the season eight and four and, and go on to a bowl game and hopefully be nine and four. Um, and, and so that's, that's what the players have to think. I mean, there's so much being said in the media and, and, and so much being said by, by people that they associate with daily. I mean, I imagine, I, I imagine professors are asking them what the heck's going on and, <laughs> right. and, and, te- and, and their, and their former class or their, their current classmates are asking them what's going on. And, and so the second you start winning, those questions go away and, and people are then saying, Hey, great job. How, you know, how, how'd you feel about the game instead of what the heck went wrong in that game? Um, and so, uh, once again, winning cures everything, and if I think they, I think I think if they can get on the uh, winning track again, um, I think uh, you, you'll see a lot of these problems kind of go away. But in the meantime, you start to question stuff. You start to question, well, am I that close with my my buddy next to me that's that uh, is a defensive lineman or a, a DB or yeah. you know a, a receiver? Is he doing his job, and does he really know what he's doing, or do the coaches really know what they're doing? I mean question everything and that's a bad bad place to be so um a win is is i think it's essential at this point so you can hopefully erase some of those uh, those questions looming david nixon we've got about a minute left and i want to ask this before uh, we we let you go follow him at d underscore nixon by the way on twitter what does it mean for former players to watch a team like this go out and represent the stretch Y, to put that helmet on, that jersey on? Because I know I have the privilege of being around you and Brian, and we watched a game with Brian Keel against Nevada the other night. You live and die with the plays. Why is that? What does it mean to you Man, as former players? I tell you, I'm actually getting goosebumps right now as you ask that question because that, that stretch <laughs> right. Y means everything. It means it means everything, man, and and uh, and I think that's why you see some former players speaking out and, and frustrated because, I mean, it, it, we you know you look at fans and a lot of fans are passionate and some of us try to harness that back, but I guarantee you we're we're much more passionate than any you know the most passionate fan out there for the fact that we we were all part of that uh, process of trying to build what BYU is, and so uh, it, there's no doubt that it's tough to watch you know the the losses because. Um, you know, there, there are things that you see that, hey, they're so close to getting stuff fixed or one guy was out of place and sure enough, it went for a big play. And so it's tough to watch. But at the same time, we've all been there. We, we've all been in those stretches where we have, you know, had losses and, and where we might have started to question ourselves or, or where people, the media started questioning us. And so we can sympathize with those players and we know that they have the potential to turn it back around. And, and we know that it, it's literally just one win away from getting that confidence back and, and realizing that, yeah, we are a good team. We are well coached. And we can go out there and beat really any team in the country we want to beat. Yep. We ha- they, they have the talent. We've seen them you know, uh, beat you know, opponents like uh, Houston and Virginia and, and Texas who have great talent. Um, and, and so it's there. It's just going out there and, and actually do, you know, going and executing the game plan. And, um, and I think that's, once again, what, what a win will do is, is hopefully get them back on that right track and, and, and hopefully they can finish up with a, a solid end of the season. David, great to talk to you. You can watch David and Brian on After Further Review every Tuesday night on BYU TV. You can also watch them on Countdown to Kickoff live this Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 12.30 Mountain Time. David, we'll see you on Saturday. All right, guys. Take care. All right, David.